Hi and welcome. So this time we'll be looking at the Harbor Freight Hercules uh, series Sawzall copy, uh, variable speed reciprocating saw is the generic name. And uh, they have three different uh, lines of these. They have the Hercules, the Braun, and the Chicago. Uh, the Hercules, this one, these were all wired versions. Uh, this one was 99 bucks. The Braun is uh, 49 or 69, I can't remember, somewhere in that range. And the Chicago is $24.99. Uh, one of the things that distinguished this one from the other ones was, number one, they give you a free blade. No, that's not really so distinguishing, although they made a big point of that. Um, <laughs> they, uh, this one is 12 amps. The other ones are slightly less current motor. Uh, and uh, one of the things they pushed on this guy on the back here, they made note of it as well, is that it acts as has all metal gearing and gear case construction for maximum durability. To me, it's kind of uh, unfortunate if they'd made any of their versions like the Chicago with plastic gears because they certainly aren't made to last in a situation like this. Uh, this one has an LED to illuminate what you're working on. The uh, depth control foot or the foot is adjustable uh, depth wise for sure. And they say it's got a 30 degree pivot. I'll have to see that when I uh, get there. It's got a quick release uh, blade. Uh, B quick release blade holder on it. Uh, my uh, Milwaukee Sawzall is so old it has the Allen screw uh, blade retention mechanism which just uh, puts a pin through the blade itself. This one uh, grabs on an indentation or something like that. I forget how these work. Uh, but I don't have a quick release one. And strangely enough, I'm not keeping this to use the Sawzall. I'm going to take it apart and use the uh, motor and circuitry for something else entirely. Um, uh, variable speed, 0 to 2800 strokes per minute, 12, 120 volts, 12 amps, 1 and an eighth inch stroke length, 8.84 pounds, not light at all, although I think my Milwaukee's heavier. Uh, tool length is 19 5 eighths inches. Uh, they have an anti-vibration over mold on the handle and the, the uh, gear section here. And uh, there's an integrated hook to let you hang it for storage. So... Uh, Let's uh, pop this guy open and uh, see what we've got here. Looks like it wants to open from this side. As with most Harbor Freight stuff, it comes with a manual that is readable and legible, although I find that they don't have a lot of detail. What I'd love to see, like on some, is like a parts blow up like they used to have. It comes with one of the Hercules series blades. By the way, these Sawzalls. They come in a cordless version for the Hercules and the Braun as well, if you're looking for that sort of thing. Um, gives their high-end blade. They have three series of blades, Hercules, Braun, and Chicago. I don't know why you bother again making Beep. blades. <laughs> Correction. I don't, I don't know why you make poor performance blades that uh, won't last very long. It's such a waste and bad for the environment, so it's better to make high quality. But one of the reasons I look at these tools is... They make these low-end tools, I think, so that they can be accessible to people that would never be able to afford the real tool or the highly high-quality version of the tool uh, at all. And so if these people have one project like demoing one room or cutting one tree that uh, fell down in a storm or something, that they can use it once and throw it out. It's just a shame that we have things in our society that you use once and throw out. So the quick release blade holder, see mine puts a pin right through here. I'm guessing this one somehow retracts a pin from the quick release on this guy. Yeah, it's in there. It's an interesting angle it's at. It seems like it's uh, more down than uh, a normal a normal blade uh, on these things. So here is the adjustable blade holder. So you can control depth if you want to cut up against something so you can control how deep the blade goes in. Because you know if you're if you're cutting something that's this thick and you try and go through it, the blade as it goes back and forth is going to nail uh, the part and bend, as I'm sure you've all discovered the hard way. I don't get the rotation part. They said 30 degrees. Maybe they mean this. Uh, they probably mean this is 30 up to 30 degrees. That's not much of a trick. Um, so there's the blade carrier all the way back. Over here is the uh, spring-loaded detent positional uh, hanging hook so you can hang it like this hang it like this right here that's not bad variable speed motor which I guess is all in the switch I've noticed a lot of uh, different manufacturers pretty much all of them are doing the variable speed control built into the switch now so probably a couple manufacturers got wise 
uh, and said, hey, uh, we can make switches to variable speed control, and then you can have the rest of the electronics external. Some of them even have the MOSFETs inside. This one clearly doesn't. Uh, this was from a uh, Bosch cordless, screwdriver, uh, cordless drill that the uh, chuck had failed on. The Bosch was uh, actually pretty nice. Uh, the, everything about it was high quality except for the chuck made in China and the chuck started slipping with drill bits after only a few years of use. Really pathetic, if you ask me. Um, everything else was nicely made. The motor, everything high quality, except for the one part, which as you know, you have a weak spot. Com consistent use will find it. All right, so the manual is... Uh, 50%, almost 50% warning. Yeah, maybe it's 50, at least 50%. And they've got some troubleshooting. There's a minimal manual, not terribly useful. They're just showing you about uh, don't cut work pieces thicker than the blade is long because then the blade will bend. And uh, there's not much useful in here, so I will file this in the uh, circular file. All right, let's uh, fire this up, see how it runs. So the cord is a decently long, uh, very flexible rubber. Now the question here, it's made in China. Ai Sheng is the uh, manufacturer of the, the wire. The one thing I wonder about this is, will the rubber lose its cross-linking compounds and break apart after a few years of, of storage and or use? Because if the rubber is too cheesy, uh, the cross link compounds come out and then it cracks and breaks. As a matter of fact, I'll show you a good example. Here's an early DeWalt angle grinder and you can see what happens after years uh, to the AC cord just sitting on a shelf. I, this was not used for most of its life and look at how the rubber is falling apart on it. So that is always a possibility. The problem is it's, I, I don't know how you tell up front because it's one of those things that only time will tell in a lot of cases. So this desperately needs a cord replacement. The question is, I don't know where this one will or won't, because yeah, I can't tell right off the bat, but it is a nice flexible rubber, plenty long, uh, about eight foot long cord. Well, it's pretty comfortable. The balance is good and the rubber feels comfortable. It's got quite a fan up here in the front here, blows a considerable amount of air. So they're pulling a lot of air through the motor to cool it. And I, it's interesting, they're not really trying to cool the gearbox directly, which I'm a little surprised about. So their high-end blade uh, doesn't stay in a straight line when you uh, go to full speed. That's, uh, that's not awesome. Here's some one and a quarter inch cold rolled. So that couldn't have been easy on it. So the, the shaking of this seems right in line with what I'm used to. I could store it right here on my vise. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, dig into the insides of this and see what we've got inside. So the unit cuts quite well. Uh, I don't think you'd normally cut one and a quarter inch uh, solid steel bar with it. You'd probably cut things like rebar or nails or things like that. I think this was uh, more of a challenge than it should have, uh, than it deserved to have. And the blade uh, still remained reasonably sharp, so that's not a bad sign. The quality of the injection mold seems good, as well does the over mold. Uh, feels good, very comfortable in the hand. All these things uh, should, should be subject to qualification saying they may or may not last a long time. And if they don't, that's a whole nother problem. But uh, as it's brand new, it's pretty darn nice. Okay. So they've got some uh, decent strain relief on the cable besides the boot back here. It has decent strain relief, but they squeezed the living pants out of this cable. Uh, they were supposed to get in a groove here 
and some of the rubber squeezed off to the side and is getting uh, compressed against the plastic, which is not ideal. Uh, the power switch is is not just a power switch, it's a speed control all in one, like uh, many of the other designs we saw. Uh, the motor is not a brushless motor, it's a brushed motor and uh, non-replaceable brusher, brushes, at least under normal situation. There's one of the brushes there and I don't see the other one on this side. So the fit and finish, here's the other uh, motor brush over here. Fit and finish on this molding is excellent quality. They have wire management built into the injection molding. This pinch style, I'm not a huge fan of it, but even the Germans use the same pinch style uh, wire uh, uh, maintenance. So this side is sort of nondescript. There's actually not much control circuitry. There's basically the speed control built into the switch with a whole lot of wires and powering the motor. Maybe there's more circuitry at the motor because I don't see any over here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. 110 in and I'm guessing DC out. Maybe it's an AC motor, I don't know. That's pretty interesting. So when you're putting this clamshell together, you gotta be pretty darn careful not to pinch the wires because they've got them very close to the outside edge. That's a little, uh, gonna be a little nerve wracking putting this guy back together. And I like the way uh, two of the uh, screw posts go through the plastic that supports the motor. And it looks like uh, the bearing for the motor is just captive in this plastic section here. This is all one piece to here. And then I'm suspecting the gears and the, the other motor stuff comes out the front. We'll see how far we can get on the front. It looks like uh, four bolts hold in the, uh, the front plate on this guy. And so we will uh, remove those and then see if we can get the rubber boot off. One thing I'd love to do is be able to get into the gearbox and see how well they lubricated this because a lot of the cheap import stuff uh, does not have adequate quantities of grease. This style tool has a ton of vibration and so uh, Harbor Freight uh, had the extra uh, extra step of loctiting all four screws that hold this front in their machine screws and they've all been loctited or some sort of loctite clone. Uh, so that that's a nice that's a nice touch because they knew that uh, there was a risk. So you actually have to take <laughs> you actually have to take this guy apart. So I don't know if you can see this. There is a C clip on the back of this. Pretty hard to get to. You need the bent nose to get in, but then. There's not a lot of room to have it fit. Okay, there we go. It's pretty tight on this shaft. I wonder how this all went together initially. So that C-clip holds this guy in place, which holds the spring up to it. <laughs> So the C-clip pulled back, that revealed the string here. Oh, I see, the spring is stuck in the middle. So it's gonna unwind when I pop this. Wow, it's way in there, holy cow. Oh, and now they have a, uh, a circlip on the front that uh, lets this guy come up. What a pain to get all this off. This must have been fun to put together as well. So I don't know if you can even see this. There's a spiral clip that goes around like one and a half revolutions in there. So you can see the spiral clip come out. Wow, there's a lot of revolutions. That must have been fun to put in. Okay. Oops. That must be the blade retention bit. All right, 
was that worth it and will we be able to get it back together and functioning so there's the plate off all right looking down this this has some sort of interesting sleeve here now i want to point out that i was able to see into the brawn version of this and the brawn just had a felt uh, sleeve a felt wiper there to keep dust and dirt out this one looks like it's something a bit more substantial all right let's see if we can get this rubber boot off now all right we got the rubber boot off here is the uh, pair of wires going to the led up front and it looks like uh, die cast aluminum so let's pop this guy open and it bolts onto the front of the motor with four screws here Interesting, the bottom part's plastic. I wonder what uh, goes on there. That's really interesting. And one of the screws is missing. I don't know if that's on purpose or accidental. So die cast aluminum. Interesting. Let's see how well lubricated this guy is inside, shall we? Wow, lock washers. Or split ring washers. That's... Uh, an extra bit and they're actually drilled and tapped i thought i half expected to see the self-tapping screws in here so this is going to be the directional translation because the motor is oriented like this which means it's rotating like this and they want to convert this to this so my guess is inside here is going to be a gear sticking out with a wheel with a gear tooth around the edge that will turn turn change this kind of rotation into this kind of rotation and then they'll attach the shaft on the wheel somewhere that's just my guess maybe i'll be surprised that'll be great all righty oh looks like some of the motor mount screws to the motor housing might have to come off in order to get this off because it's kind of in the way they're kind of in the way look at that this assembly has machine screws to attach it to self to attach to the motor i don't know if there's plastic behind it but that's a little disappointing because they are self uh, there's metal you know mach sheet metal screws i knew i'd come up with the word eventually okay got the screws out and there we go Oh, plenty of grease. So there is your helical worm gear on the bottom of this plate here uh, is going to be more uh, more gears that mesh with the motor gear and that trans that converts the uh, rotation on this axis into rotation on this axis, which then this guy has a bearing follower there and it can go back and forth there's a lot of grease they did not chintz at all on the grease and it's still a felt sleeve followed by a foam sleeve behind it uh, i don't know how that's going to do over time maybe that's just more than adequate i i can't say for sure so here's the top part i took off the bottom so i could see how the bearing was uh, put in it looks like uh, you got to use a spanner here to unscrew this guy to get the bearing that uh, holds this guy in and they didn't even tap this hole so and the whole the screws that they used are not self-tapping screws so either they left them really loose and it, they were still intending on having uh, the screws put in on here and they just put in here and they forgot or uh, they never intended on putting screws there on this particular model either and they left it for future in case they needed i'm not really sure why because this guy was pretty darn loose so i'm just going to put this guy back together because getting it apart any further is going to require damaging something these did not have loctite on them Matter of fact they were barely finger tight quick test before i put it too far back together i had a couple screws in and just want to make sure I got it all lined up right, which it looks like I did. So the way the assembly works is it's spring-loaded. Um, there is a ramp inside this guy, as you can see on this side, that pushes this large pin in. And the little guy just stays retained. Oops. So this is the pin we're pushing in right here. And so if I get this guy set up this way, and I stick my screwdriver in there like the blade, you can see it it's pushing the pin into the screwdriver and that's how it works all right 
Here we go again, except this time I'm going to be smart and I'm going to put the spring in first. That's how they did it. And so when I bent it to get it out, that was inappropriate. So this guy just slides down here like this. Then this guy slides on here like so. And there's a large diameter, a small diameter. They're actually pretty close to each other. The large diameter holds the large pin. The small diameter holds the small pin. And then this guy, you have to get the, the big lobed side with the big pin, which is where my right finger is, and get that there. Okay. Well, that was a pain. There we go. We're back working now. All right, so we got it all back together. And working. Uh, the quick release blade holder is a pain in the butt to use. You really you have to rotate like three quarters of a rotation to get the blade out, which is a nice safety feature, but very hard to do one-handed. Uh, the uh, the adjustable blade uh, uh, depth control or setting is uh, reasonably well made. There's lots of lube in the gears. Uh, the motor seemed reasonably well. I didn't dig into that because I didn't want to take the risk of. Uh, having to pull out some bearings. The brushes are not replaceable, that's a negative. The uh, plastic molding is excellent, as good as any I've seen. The uh, speed control is great. One thing I would have liked is a locking switch. So one model down, you can lock it on, which is really handy if you're trying to cut through a tree and you're, you're just trying to get in there. I guess they do that for safety's sake, so you can't have it on and fall still operating. Um, but, uh, the, the, see this mark? See this little indentation here? That actually is the uh, locking switch for the lower, the brawn version of this guy. And it's right here in the molding, so they had it so they could add it later if they wanted. Um, but all in all, I think it's decent quality. The LED is not terribly bright. Uh, I don't know that's going to be particularly helpful. It's also blocked partially by this. Uh, the, the stop here. So I don't think it's particularly useful. I don't know where they could have put it would been better uh, because there's not a lot of room here, but you would have need something like here aiming down or here aiming up. In any case, light's not very useful. Uh, but all in all, I think the thing's okay. Uh, Non-replaceable brushes means when they wear out, this thing's done. So uh, expect that, but this is only a hundred bucks. Uh, you get it on sale, it's 89 bucks. So it's a pretty darn good price. Hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.